this is our neighbourhood uh, beer mix. <laughs> it sounds like it's getting ready to have a go with a mini bike thing. It's pretty cool. You see people, when the weather's nice, you see people um, coming along with their bikes and trying out some of the jumps. Some of these are pretty massive. This is, I wouldn't mind trying out this one here with just um, with the limited experience I have. But some of these jumps are pretty massive. So you start just up there. And then you have the option of uh, jumping here. Oh, actually, I wouldn't jump here at these at the moment. Look at all the mud down the bottom there. But yeah, it's pretty insane. You can get seriously hurt on these things. That's really cool. Actually, one time uh, we have a similar kind of setup in my hometown, and there was one time I was doing it was a smaller jump, sort of probably about the size of this uh, this one here, and um, there's sort of a gap between the 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 off ramp and the on ramp. Is that I don't know if that's the terminology. Anyway, so I just my front wheel sort of just dipped a little bit and hit the front of the, the front of the ramp you're supposed to land on. Now it's been flying over the handlebars into like a tree, and my <laughs> I opened my eyes and you know right in front of me is this massive rock. Missed it by about an inch. That was lucky. Just came out with a few bruises and scratches. That's why you should always wear a helmet. I was wearing a helmet, but it wouldn't have, even in, in, in retrospect, it probably wouldn't have helped too much. <laughs> anyway, the cemetery is just over there. I really like the cemetery. I'm sure I've said that before. Oh, this is a rugby field. All over the place. Um, a lot of people that watch these videos are probably going to be from America. Or Europe, or even Japan. Um, Europeans will be used to this kind of thing. These are, uh, yeah, all over the place here. In fact, you got a cricket pitch over there. Won't see too many of those in Europe. You know, obviously, except in England. And uh, yeah, I don't know if this is a full-size rugby pitch. about 100 metres long. Maybe it is. The TV makes the rugby pitches look a lot bigger. So, again, sorry, sorry about the wind. The wind is freezing by the way. We're, we're in, um, just coming to the end of winter now. And I should have brought something else, but, um, something else, some kind of wind shell. But, uh, also, this is going to go on my, my, my vlog channel. Welcome to my vlog channel. Um, this is where I just chuck. Oh, I'll just be putting random stuff. I'll just be talking to the camera right now. Editing. And, uh, yeah. So you can just watch me walk around and talk to myself. Talk about, you know, what I'm doing, what I'm thinking. And so, yeah. Um, anyway. Cemetery. Oh yeah, wind. Wind is freezing. Yeah, uh, uh, Wellington winters. Uh, I was in Japan um, one winter, and it was it was snowed, and so although the air temperature was quite cold, there was no wind, so you could easily just wrap up and be nice and warm while you're outside. But in Wellington, it doesn't get that cold, like. Like even zero degrees is a, is a stretch, but that wind, that just, it just goes straight to your core. It really chills you down, so you need, you need some kind of wind, windshield if you want to stay warm. It doesn't matter if you've got five layers on, that, that wind will go straight through you. Like it is now, okay, <laughs> I'm freezing. 
So we're at the cemetery. <laughs> These graves. <laughs> um, I'll show you the map in a second, but it's really interesting how they've sort of segregated the whole cemetery uh, into it's mainly mainly religion. But put put people in different designated areas for different religions. Well, that's interesting. All these these graves have steps going up to them. Look at that. I wonder why you'd need steps. Oh, I suppose to reach reach the flower things. Okay. Mm. Cross. You'll notice there's not as many crosses as there are in most cemeteries, you'll see. New Zealand's a fairly secular country, and it's always been fairly secular. Um, I, like, there's still a lot of religion, especially back when these people died. When was this? Like, 40s? Yeah. 40s or 50s. And... That, that generation, like my grandparents, are very religious, um, and and that's just the, that was just the norm norm back then. And now, now I, at least in the younger generation, most young people are not religious. So there's been a large last fifty years has been a huge, huge switch. But even still, people don't want to like these people. I mean, you can see. Um, you can see, and our father's keeping for all eternity, but there's no sort of religious symbolism or anything on the on the graves. Oh, those are. are they? I'm not sure. Are they hawks? That's cool. Um, I'll take you down to my favourite. My favourite section of the cemetery. It's really old, and a lot of the graves. I mean, in fact, pretty much all of the graves have just been forgotten. They're, they're just left. Yeah, but, but the, the eucalyptus trees, these huge um, gum trees, uh, just make the whole thing really cool. See, look at it, man. Come down here at night, man. You got to yourself a horror movie just walking through this place. Especially because of this, you can see the graves are sort of falling in. Oh, of course, everyone's buried, you know, six feet under, so it's not like you know you're going to see skeletons of your parents' side, but but it's just the concrete, it's just the concrete collapsing in on itself. You can see cracks as well. Um, helicopter. There he goes. Oh, it's the red one. It's uh, it's the rescue helicopter. I'm gonna hope nothing's gone wrong out there. Hmm. This is a great section. Oh wow, look at that. These are some Chinese graves, and they've got like, actually pictures of the people. They died really recently. Wow. So you see the. Well, they were about the same age um, while they were living, but what? But the the um, husband died twenty years earlier. Man, that would be a bit depressing. Okay, again, there's some more Chinese people. Yeah, some of these graves, like these ones here. No one's visited these ones in a long time. But you can see you can see some of the headstones of those ones just up there. They've just fallen off, and no one's bothered to put them back up again. No one, no one knows these knows these people anymore. Died in 1920. I mean, 
This person died in 1906. It's um, Anne Margareta. 1906. That's, you know, I think that's long enough ago that we can safely say that no one alive today has ever met this person. The person that's buried here. No one. No one remembers what they were like. That's interesting. We got like a wooden wooden thing around this one. There doesn't seem to be any names or anything on it. Hmm. And here. Yeah. You see the heart there? The heart on the the grave, and it seems like the only bit that the grave that's collapsed in on itself is the bit inside the heart. What's that one? 1907? Yeah, again. Aged 24 years. That's unfortunate. I also like, that's interesting, the um, it just says in loving memory of um, Emily, beloved wife of this person, Johnston. They didn't write her last name. I assume it was Johnson. But. Just Emily. Usually you see. It says. This is the grave of this person. And it has their first name and last name. And it says beloved wife of. Emily. For example. Oh, sorry. Angel. Wonder. I don't get arms broken off. That's unfortunate. What's she carrying there? I wonder. Looks like a like a, like a bag of um you know, paper bag you keep your liquor bottle in. Yeah. You know, I'll take you to the map and I'll show you that. This is the map I was talking about before. So you can see you've got Catholic areas, you've got public areas, the older graves are all public. Salvation Army, even is a South African one here, it's interesting, and then you got all the service people um, who died in the wars. Anglican, Greek Orthodox, Salvation Army, just up here. That's interesting, yeah. I'll go see the Tangi Wai and the, um, the Rose Garden as well. From what I remember, there are about 80,000 people uh, buried here, but they they stopped. There's the cemetery got full about 50 years ago, so of the people who are actually buried here, the most recent uh, 50 years ago. So like even my parents wouldn't have, you know, met them. Actually, no, I won't go, I won't, I won't go into that. Sorry, Mum. Um, you also get these, uh, these mausoleum things. Uh, crypts. Crypts, I think, is a better, a better word for them. They call them vaults uh, on, the, on the map, if you notice. But crypts is so much cooler. Is that, is that the right terminology? Crips? Mausoleum? I'm not sure. Vault sounds like it's just you're storing stuff in there. It doesn't sort of imply you're storing bodies. Well, you know. It's, <laughs> it sounds really bad now. You're not storing bodies, you're, you're, you know, putting the bodies in there very, like, you know, as they're supposed to be. That's interesting. Look at that guy. That's got one of those really old-fashioned locks on it. It's a tiny little one. 
Maybe this is the back entrance. Well, maybe this is someone else's. 18, wow. Entered into rest. Yeah, so this is 1909. Uh, 1919. Aged 88. Wow. Aged 95. That's impressive. I mean, 1922. That's impressive. They've even got little little holes in there so they can breathe, I suppose. <laughs> um, mm. Also, you notice there's a couple of different ways of marking the uh, graves, writing the letters on. You can either engrave them, which is a good idea, or you can uh, make them out of lead, which degrades and falls off. Not such a good idea. So often you see graves that just don't look like that, have anything on them at all. When what's happened is that just all the all the lettering has just fallen off. It's just a uh, you know like after a hundred years, you know. <laughs> so you can see on on this one, you can see some of the letters are, have just just gone. They're just dissolved. Whereas if you etch it, it's going to last a lot longer than a hundred years. This is probably one of my favourite crypts just up here. So you can hear the nature. Look at those twoies. There they are. So you see them sitting on the branch there? They have a little uh, little tuft of white fluff underneath them. I don't know if underneath their uh, then their head. On their neck. See it? Maybe the camera's not quite picking it up. Need a much better camera. There you go. Um, anyway, it's probably one of my favourite crypts because it just has these creepy angels on it. Oh, there they go. <laughs> um, it's creepy, creepy angels. Underwood. There you go. That's the name of the family. But. These angels look like they could come alive at any time. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's the Doctor Who that's put me off these things, and that guy out there just looking down on you, man. Creepy, creepy. Also, find it interesting the um, the taps. There's taps all over the cemetery. I don't know what they're for. Maybe they're for watering. Watering the plants, maybe for the gardeners to water the plants. Yeah, that's probably what it is. I just all over the place. The infant section, yeah. So this is kind of depressing. These are all the, the young, well, not this particular bit right here, but just up on the hill there. All the uh, all the babies who died. I don't know if it probably includes things uh, like still stillborns and. That's kind of, kind of sad. See, we had a um, we had a storm here in Wellington a couple of months ago, and there goes the helicopter again. Hmm. It definitely looks like the rescue helicopter. You know, um, we had a storm here a couple, couple months ago, and so a lot of the, of the trees actually just got taken out. In the older section, I um, go a long, long way back, and um, it looked. I mean, the trees grow amongst the graves. I mean, you can see. So when they get uprooted, the the graves get, get get torn apart. So I hope that hasn't happened, but we'll, we'll check it out. Later. This is a nice, nice, really nice mausoleum thing here. Hmm. 
and then here we have a wall I think these people uh, were cremated and they're actually scattered elsewhere and so this is their their little um, I don't know what you call it there's more back here and you've got a little church I don't know what this is actually maybe it's the crematorium anyway let's see some of them have little flower holders wow these people died a while ago like this is, these are when my grandparents were born you know um they're really cute little flower holders Hmm. Oh, no, you can go like I if you go on the roof there. Oh, it's a dead end. That's a nice little area. I think this is the second biggest uh, cemetery in New Zealand. I think the biggest is up in Auckland. Small chapel. Built in 1909. Yes, yeah, so it's just a small, small chapel for, uh, for services, I suppose. Gorgeous. I love, I love the ivy climbing up the walls of, uh, of brick buildings. It looks really cool. Um, so there's a large chapel or churchy thing up here. I think this might be the main one. Not quite as pretty. Uh, these are some of the servicemen graves. So these, uh, these are World War, what? No, South African, South African War. Was that World War? Maybe it's a different one. Okay. So just after World War Two, actually, a lot of people died. Yeah, so this is the main church. No, it's this is ugly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I I do like churches. It's probably one of the one of the best things about religion is the, the architecture, but this is just ugly. Just a concrete block. Yeah. So I think the one down the hill was probably an older not older chapel. Okay. So I think it's more service. This one. Um, now these aren't just from the two wars. I have just noticed. I mean, these are people who died in '68. What was that? Korean? Korean War? Is that too recent? I don't think we went to Vietnam. I'm I'm terribly ignorant about about wars and when they were <laughs> and who fought in them. I don't know the main ones, but you know the the world wars, obviously. But, hmm. Yeah, 1950. 1950. And 1948. What was straight after? I wish they'd tell us. Oh, maybe there's a thing up here. Oh look, that guy's got like a gold one. Um, nope. On this panel I recorded the names of those members of the armed forces who died in this district while serving their country in time of war. His remains were cremated and ashes scattered. 
Alright. Anyway, back down the hill. Interesting how you can see on all these graves the uh, the moss actually just grows on the uh, where the where the paint is, and not so much on the. See, this is all you can't read that anymore. It should say Great War Veteran or something. Like that. That's what's, yeah, this one says Great War Veteran. So maybe the same. Yeah. See, Wellington lost a lot of people, and New Zealand lost a lot of people. For the size of our country. And we lost a lot. As did every other country, of course. Marble Arch? Marble, do you think? Probably. died and were buried at sea between New Zealand and the overseas bases. So this is World War One people. Ogre and there's the World War Two. That's interesting. Died in and around New Zealand or en route to overseas service and to whom the fortunes of war denied a known and honoured grave. That's the people there. Mm. Oh look, there's a little fountain and a really nice little chair. Man, that's cool. Oh, what did I say? Can I barely read it? AD 1920, in remembrance of those who fought in the Great War, 1914-1918, erected by the Women's National Union. There's no fish in there. No. Nope. I hope the light's okay, it's getting a little bit dark. It's probably about four o'clock now. Place to sit. Peace with honor. Nineteen twenty one that was erected. Down here, it's another, another crypt. God, I hope I'm using that word right. Oh, okay, they've been cut back for the winter. It's usually a, a gorgeous rose garden here, but uh, not at the moment, apparently. Yep, and there's little plaques again. People who have been cremated, and you know, families want a little, uh, little plaque. Remembrance. My granddad is similar, not there, but a similar plaque back up uh, in my hometown. This is an interesting section. Um, there's just some weird, weird positions. Yeah, let me have a footpath 
down here to the uh, entrance of the graves here. And you've got like graves here. That just just I mean I don't know what happened. Did it slide down the hill? No, I have no idea. Why it would be there. You got some down there as well. Maybe maybe that was the original row of graves. And they just built these ones in front of them. See another one just behind behind there and the gravestone just over there as well. Hmm. You know, sideways over there, leaning up against the tree. Some um, infants, infants, what looks good. Oh, I think this is the Chinese section now. You have all these Chinese graves, or, although that's it's not. Okay, no, we're not in the Chinese section yet, I'm sure. I'm sure there is a Chinese section there. Hmm. It's the, the church we walked past just before. Graves? I'm not sure what these ones are. Is that buried here or not? Yeah, just looks like normal graves. That's interesting. And again, the graves behind. It's a nice grave here surrounded, but then there's another grave neglected just over there. I hope you can hear me, I hope I'm talking loud enough. Okay, so that's a unique little grave over there. Even more basic, that little tiny one there. I hope I'm not being disrespe disrespectful at all. I hope no one finds any of this offensive. I understand that the way I look at, at you know, at graves and dead people, probably. Um, prove it blunt about the whole thing. But, you know, people are dead. And they died a long time ago. A long time ago. I think we have to start being objective about it at some point. You got a tree growing out of that one. That's nice. Wonder how old those trees are. Oh, sorry about the wind. I'll go fight for the section. Oh, we're in the Jewish. Yeah, the Jewish section now. You can see the uh, all the markings on the graves are in Hebrew. Hebrew. Hebrew's the. the the writing, right? Yiddish is a language? Pretty sure that's how it works. You got, you got English as well, but you got Hebrew there as well. Well, that's nice. See, this one's clearly, you know, had some collapsing and they've just put wood over the top of them. Which is, someone, you know, really is about, about that. I hope this isn't too long and boring. I might cut out bits of it actually. 
I don't want to do any editing. Actually, no, I'm not going to do any editing. I'm not going to cut out. If you're still here, then you're good. I hope you're enjoying it. Oh, there we go. It's a, um, this is a, a Freemason's uh, symbol on this Jewish grave. Which is interesting. A compass in a, a square, I think, or something like that. It's not a compass, you know, one of those things used for doing triangulation, things like that. Hmm. I think this is just going to be my grand tour of the cemetery. Okay, these are all native, native New Zealand trees. I don't know which ones these are. I think Kanuka or Manuka. I'm not sure. They look quite similar. I like I like running here as well. Nice place to run. Good to look at other people too as well. In fact, I'm surprised it's not it's not more busy here. It's not busier. It's, I mean, it's Sunday afternoon, uh, Saturday afternoon, and it's not a bad day. I mean, the sky's still blue. A little bit cold. Let's say here's some more mausoleums. Yeah, none. Oh, in fact, people have been putting these as, as early as 2008. Mm. But no, no, no. That I, I said no one, no one buried here. Um, yeah, I stopped burying people 50 years ago. Not, not, not that they got, didn't get stormed in crypts. It's a really interesting cemetery because I know most cemeteries I feel are just on flat ground, whereas in Wellington, flat ground is a uh, you know, it's not that common. It's a very hilly city. I mean, you can see the houses up on the hill over there. That's just normal. <laughs> people just live on hills, so so people you know, get buried on hills as well. It seems to work alright. I mean, these people have been burying here for for many decades, and they still seem to be clinging on to the side of the hills, alright. Um, oh yeah, There's a little track up the hill here. Mm. I might do more adventure videos actually, like this. This is an adventure, but I mean, this this kind of length. Go up into the into the hills and just wander around. I mean, and I know I can't do as good a job as someone like Kurt can, but I know, get better. You know, there's no other way to do it than to practice. I've got a chesty as well now for, for my GoPro. It's been filmed on a GoPro, so. Um, I've got a, a sort of chest harness for it. And uh, I went running with it. I'm still trying to figure out how to stabilize the pitches, but I think I've got something that'll do the job now. So I can just chuck that on, go for a walk, and then talk to you guys.
It's interesting that they haven't, this section here, they haven't gone back to back. There's only, you know, a single set of graves between tracks. And then they all switch over. Face the other direction on that side. Maybe so they're facing in, into the, uh, you know, downhill. For some reason. hard to tell if you can see my fingers or not um, because of the fish eye and I'm trying to block out the wind as much as possible it's probably not working very well Tragic, really. I mean, look at that, aged 23 hours. Didn't even get a chance. Sucks. These are, these are newer sections. So, I mean, again, these people still died at least 50 years ago, but in fact, most of these people died about 70, 60 years ago. Yeah, 60, I'll say 60. <laughs> Good to see some colour in those things. as well. This is the uh, Tangiwai Memorial. So, Tangiwai was a, a train incident. So, it? December 1953. I, it was on Christmas or Christmas Eve? Around Christmas anyway. And, uh, yep, lots of people died. That tragedy, friggin' uh, 60 years ago. That'll be 60 years exactly this Christmas. And so I assume these are the. Some of them don't have names on them. That's interesting. Maybe they didn't identify them. I've got all the names here. Okay. And of course, the train is a. I don't know what exactly what kind of trip they were going on, but. Be like whole families, like this June. Whole families. So I probably do it there, right? You can see all the names. And a lot of them, probably couples or, you know, father and son, things like that. So, yeah, train disaster. Um, the bridge got taken out by a lahar, which is what you get when the, the crater. In the uh, top, top of a mountain, it fills up water, but one of the sides is a bit unstable, and so every now and then it just collapses and you get a huge rush of water uh, going down the hill as the crater, the crater lake empties. So we have all the warning systems in place now, so we know when they happen and we know what areas to shut off. But at that point, survived. Um, but what's interesting, Tangiwai is um, 
Maori is a Maori name. Tangi is the word for sort of a funeral or, or death. Why it means water. So that's uh yeah. A bit I don't want to say ironic, but it's interesting. Interesting coincidence. So you have more graves down here as well. There's graves everywhere, it's a freaking cemetery. I should just stop saying that there's graves. Look. This is the forest I like exploring. It's, a, it's a kind of it's a native New Zealand forest for the most part. It's uh, beautiful when you. Uh, I just wish the camera would be better in low light conditions because then. You know, you hear all the birds settling down. There's some awesome trees up there. In fact, the um, the old, uh, was it, 800 year old um, Rimu tree. That I, uh, there's another video that I made um, on my other channel. So that, uh, also, you can see. Um, the, uh, the skyline up there. You can't quite see on the side. You can see just up the top there that hill poking out. The big trail that goes all the way along along the ridge um, around Wellington. It's one of the, sort of the boundaries. Like one side you got this. And down here, actually, there's a really pretty little gully that I went up. Um, one of my first videos, actually. My first, maybe second video. Like, uh, interesting. Um, and, like, really cool little uh, waterfalls and and uh, stream down there. It's a bit steep to go down here. In fact, I think this is probably about where I came back up. This is a cool little section. This, this is really on a hill. This is really steep. I don't know if you can tell. The fisheye kind of distorts, distorts the hills. But these, these graves here are set on some really steep ground. And it looks like some of them are sort of starting to get swallowed up by the forest, by the weeds down there. I don't know if they're actually sliding down the hill where the forest is climbing up the hill. No, they're not old either. These are some of the more recent graves. This is turning into a really long video, I'm sorry. If you're still watching, then it props to you. Um, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe I should suggest it. No, I won't. Sorry. come in a big loop and we're back. Oh I can show you some of the trees that have fallen over down there. You can see any damage to any of the graves. Again some of the, the these are the old graves that might have been damaged to. Mm. Big no what we call it. Crevasse. Dunno, no that's usually for ice isn't it? This is just a big gully. That's interesting. Look at that. There's a hmm. bases. Bundle. No, they've got names on them. Maybe they're repairing them or something. No idea. 
Huh. Yeah, these ones are broken. They're weird. And you can see there's a nice just a river flowing down there. Goes underneath the path here. It's actually a great, great sprint orienting location. It's really fun. There's a nice view of the forest there. It's very green. New Zealand natives are actually evergreen. Evergreen trees. I don't think there's any exceptions. Um, so, I mean, we're in the middle of winter right now, and you can see everything's green as ever. Actually, we're not in the middle of winter. We're, we're at the end of winter, but still. Um, is this the old section here? Okay, we'll have a look up there. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. They've got um like a family tree. I don't know if you can see it on the on the grave there. Nice. Salvation Army section just up there. Salvation Army is a good name. <laughs> Salvation Army. Not the Salvation part, but the Army part is certainly appropriate. Deep, you can see very steep ground. It's amazing that it's managed to hang on. Everyone's like this. I mean, a lot of work must have gone into that to keep that stable. You can see how how long the backs have to be of these these graves. Do I keep them horizontal? <coughs> ah, damn it, Mr. There's a big tree that's fallen over. Um, so I wonder if it's taking any grapes with it. Hopefully not. Yeah, you can see it's only had an effect on a couple of grays. Hmm. Takes another one up here.
There is actually an asphalt path under here. Which <laughs> covered under all the leaves. There's a pet dog over there. I don't know if I'm going to get through... Oh yeah, I can crawl under there. So, some damage. Looks like most graves escaped. I'm harmed actually. I mean, they made of stone. Okay. <laughs> In fact, for a tree that huge to fall down, like, the only thing that happened is it just lifted up the scrap a little bit. Pretty good, I'm pretty good. Okay, well, I think we're going around in a circle now. So, um, yeah, that's my, I told the guards if you're still watching this, god. Just good on you, man. Thank you. <laughs> um, and hopefully you'll see more of me on this channel. More just just little things, you know. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, and see. Ya. Have a good day.